welcome to Stop Painting Snippets. And another question that we are very commonly asked and that we see a lot of patients are people who have syncope in the gym or either during or after exercise. And obviously there's a lot to think about here. Um, and sometimes it can be very serious and sometimes it can be not so serious and we need to work out uh, the difference. So Boo, you're in the gym um, and you see somebody next to you who is sprinting um, and they look like they're working very hard and they're at maximal capacity, they're doing a final sprint and then they smack down onto the, um, onto the ground, uh, they appear to have blacked out. What does that mean? What's happened to them? So Mel, that's a very sinister kind of thing, because that implies syncope occurring at peak exertion. Now, if you think about the kind of syncope that we talked about previously with basal syncope, or the syncope that occurs with a long prodrome, this doesn't have a prodrome. If a person is at peak exercise and they suddenly lose consciousness, this points towards a uh, a more serious form of syncope, and we need to exclude what's called cardiac syncope, or syncope due to a heart rhythm abnormality or a structural heart abnormality. And this does not have a flavor of basovagal syncope. So if somebody is at peak exertion, it need not be on the treadmill, it can be going upstairs, but not when you're when you reach the top or climbing a hill or a mountain. It's not when you get to the top and rest, it's in the mid exertion or in the midst of your peak exertion. You, you then feel a very short prodrome or indeed palpitations before collapsing. Take that very seriously and I would say seek urgent attention. That patient who falls beside me, if I'm in the gym with that person, I would call an ambulance and get mm. admitted to hospital for mm. urgent cardiac assessment. Mm. Okay, so blacking out during exercise when you're working hard is, is always bad until pre -mobilized. Yeah, it's a red flag. Okay. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Thank you. So Trish, you're in the gym and you see someone who is also working hard, but they finish their workout um, and then you see them talking to their friends and going up to the water fountain and having a chat with, with their friends at, at the water fountain. And then they start to behave a bit strangely and pass out. What's going on there? Well, it's a combination. It's the, it's the lead up to things as well. So if they've been in the gym and they've been they've been running or exercising, and perhaps they're getting off and suggest that they at the end of their workout. So they, they tend to be hot and sweaty and flushed and red. And they've been so they dilate their vessels are dilated, blood is pooling elsewhere to help them cool off. And while they're running or they're really act activating, then the muscles in the legs are helping to return blood to the heart. The heart's going faster. Everything is, the blood is getting pushed around the body and back up to the brain. And they suddenly, which don't have a cool down, they suddenly stop because they've realised the time and they need to get off. And they suddenly stop, step off, stand around, maybe they're having a drink, and their heart right now, their, their legs stop working, the muscles stop working. That's stopping returning the blood to the, to the heart and to the brain. Uh, they're cooling down. The heart rate is dropping, especially if they're fit and like me. Um, the heart rate is dropping quite quickly and the blood can cool quite quickly. Mm. And so, divert to the and skin, skin, and, to the skin and everywhere else, away from the core and away from the brain. And in that process, in that the time that it takes them to have a drink or walk towards the shower or walk towards the changing room, the blood pressure can keep on dropping and they can feel syncopal and then and then pass out. Mm. And that's uh, I think that the very I mean the, as, as Boone has said, if, if you're in the gym, you, can, you know, it's a red flag and you should have it checked out. Mm. Um, and hopefully, when you, you dig a little deeper into their history and exactly what the process is and the detail of the history of what happened, when, when it happened, mm. um, it may be proven, you may be seen to be actually it's post exertional, it's not a peak. Mm. And it's all those, yeah, especially people who don't, they go first thing in the morning. Um, they've not hydrated, so they drive from the night before, and then they then they exercise, and they, they only drink after they exercise. All these things can be wrong. So Boone's patient that's going off to A and E because they they smack the treadmill during sprint. Um, your patient, what what might they be feeling? So what would they describe? What would their symptoms? So obviously that was an unheralded. No warning, blackout for boom. For your patient, what would their symptoms be? They say they're fine, they were feeling fine, they, they stop, they, they step off, and then either whilst they're having a drink or they start to walk away, they start to feel a bit lightheaded, a bit woozy. Um, they might not feel hot or sweaty because they're, they're in the gym, and that's they did, they think that was normal, so that, that would mask those symptoms. So, 
what advice would you give him? Well, um, with my patients, I, I mean, I think in the first instance, what they should do is actually get to the floor and, and take evasive action before the symptoms get worse. But what my general advice is to people is to think about when they might visit the gym and hydrate before the exercise. So not wait to sweat buckets and then and then fill it with fluids, but to hydrate beforehand and maybe have something salty beforehand to make sure they retain that. Um, and to when they finish exercise, to have a cool down. So not to suddenly just stop. Sometimes, for example, that exercise might be running for a train uh, and you know you just get on, you've just paid and you just slapped your, your parcel on the on the front and then you suddenly stop and then people feel a bit pre Um So it's hard to have that cool down when you've just got onto a bus or a train, but in the gym, certainly to have that cool down, give your body time and your blood pressure time to sort of adjust to the changing activity that you that you've had. And keep your muscles moving. Cool. Yeah, you're pumping. So yeah. Trish and Mel, I might add a couple more points there. Um, if you know that you're prone to fainting in that situation in the gym at the water cooler, um, what you might consider doing is wearing compression tights. So uh, you can get compression tights for, for the gym or compression leggings which can be very useful to squeeze or mm. give an additional layer of squeezing to get the blood uh, not pooling mm. in those uh, in those situations. The second thing you might try, if you again know that you have a tendency to feel this way, is to maybe pop an electrolyte tablet or have an electrolyte drink uh, before and during and after your gym workout because that additional salt or salty water that you top yourself up with can expand the volume of blood that you have effectively so that you don't you don't pull the blood down. That's great. That, that's great. And uh, one final, I know we're, we're running off of time. Um, what, would you do, what would you say to the person who says, I actually can't really exercise now because I, I, this happens every time? My goodness. I mean, that person is steeped in fear, fear of something that hasn't occurred, occurring because of what's happened in the past. So in the present moment, be aware that you can take control of this condition. And if you're having the fears, the fears itself and stopping you exercising may be doing yourself more harm. So start slowly and do all those things that we uh, mm. talked about, which are typically conservative strategies. And if you go slowly, hydrating, compressing, mm. and you take it easy, it is less likely that you're going to have an episode and then you anchor that positive gym experience mm. to then push yourself to do the next one and do more and more every day. So none of this weekend warrior stuff where you just wait, wait for a month and then say, oh, I feel well, I'm going to go and hit it. No, you start slowly and you stop in a given time point. Maybe 15 minutes for the first day, mm. 20 minutes for the, for the, for the next time. And follow time. all of that advice to stop. Or we'll consi we'll consider what, exactly. what you do and not fight gravity at the same time. So this, you, can, you can raise your heart rate without having to fight gravity. Which brings me on to the very final question, which is a lot of people that have these symptoms are people that have been lifting very heavy weights. Uh, and once they, at the end of that weight lift, they pass out. And sometimes they have to make that decision between carrying on heavy weight lifting or living with fainting. Do you have any comments about that? That's a difficult one, Mel. Um, and I, I guess I have not yet come across a patient who has had a significant injury on the way down because they've lost consciousness. So the the relaxation of your isometric exercise, which is where you're clenching all your muscles, is the thing that eventually loosens up your vessels and allows the blood to come down. Even at the point at which you come down on the weight, you still have to get the weight off yourself onto the bar or mm -hmm. onto a supporting structure. So there shouldn't be a situation, or it's not very common, or I've never seen it, where you're in the middle of a deadlift and then mm. the bar comes mm. crashing down because you've lost consciousness. It doesn't happen. Because, because the blood is still going to the muscles. The not. blood is still yeah. being compressed by those tight muscles yeah. which you need to use to do that deadlift. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't be so concerned, but definitely once you put the weight down, you might then start to feel dizzy as you relax those muscles. And as Trish said, vary it so that you pretend to then lie on a lying on a floor mat to do some floor-based exercises. Mm. So you're lying down after a deadlift, if, if that make, and that should really help with your, with your pre uh, pre feelings. And one final point, one final, final point that I would like to add now, is that when you see your doctor, for goodness sake, don't say, oh, I went to the gym and then I fainted and I didn't know how I got there. No, you can tell from today's conversation 
Hmm. That there is a big difference between going to your doctor and say, I face planted in the midst of my sprint, sprint <clears throat> as opposed to, I had a fainting in the gym at the water cooler five minutes after I finished my sprint. Exactly. Very different mode of investigations. Hmm. And one doctor can almost reassure you and just get you back home with those simple conservative strategies. In the other one, you need an urgent uh, outpatient appointment to yeah. A to A. So, please be very mindful that your history will guide the doctors. Very good. Thank you so much.